got another exam question walk through for A level chemistry. So this is number nine in the Enthalpy Changes playlist. The question suitable for all of the major exam boards. And I really hope you like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I'd love you to do so. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we're starting with the definition. The enthalpy change of combustion is the enthalpy change where one mole of a substance is reacted completely in oxygen. We don't have to mention standard conditions because it didn't ask for the standard enthalpy change of combustion. Moving on to part B, so we've got to calculate the percentage uncertainty in the temperature change, which I've already worked out. The difference between those two numbers is 31 degrees C. So the percentage uncertainty is that uncertainty value divided by what's being measured multiplied by 100 to get it into a percentage but because there's two temperature readings in the change we double the uncertainty so the answer is 1.61 percent moving on to the big six marker calculation so we've got to calculate the enthalpy change of combustion for butanol in kilojoules per mole and then make some kind of comparison between that and the data book value and then suggest some improvements for this experiment so the first thing we do is calculate the energy that's gone into that 200 grams of water so we use the q equals mc delta t equation so m 200 specific capacity of water is 4.18 already calculated the delta t is 31 so we've got that many joules but we're going to put it into kilojoules because our final answer is going to be in kilojoules per mole Next thing we do is work out the moles of fuel that's been burned. So the mass of fuel burned was that, divided by its MR, 74, 0.0177. And then the enthalpy change of combustion is the kilojoules divided by the moles, 1464 numerical value. Don't forget the minus sign because it's an exothermic reaction. So moving on to the differences, and then we'll finish off with the improvements. So differences to data book values. I've gone for four differences. The mark scheme actually only wanted two. So I'm saying there was non-standard conditions used in the lab. Heat's been lost to the surroundings. Water's evaporated from the beaker. And incomplete combustion might have occurred. I'm just finishing off with some improvements. So I'm kind of flipping what I've said up here. So carry out under standard conditions. Use a lid and insulate the beaker plentiful supply of oxygen and it does mention in the diagram it just says the word beaker doesn't it it doesn't say that it's glass or anything so I'm kind of just assume that that's a glass beaker so therefore a metal calorimeter would be better than a glass beaker moving on to the next part so the other student has used 150 grams of water in the beaker rather than 200 so everything kind of happens in proportion with these experiments so 150 grams is three quarters or 0 0.75 of 200 grams. So that means that the mass of fuel that the other student's gonna need is gonna be 0 0.75 times what the other person used. So 0 0.9825 grams. Moving on to part C, where we've got to calculate the bond enthalpy for this CO double bond. I call these an in minus out calculation. It's basically the enthalpy change for the reaction is equal to the sum of the energy that has to go in to break the bonds in the reactants minus the sum of the energy you get out when these bonds in the products are made. So putting the numbers in, I'm getting this here. So I'm just gonna work out the total energy in and the energy out. So my equation simplifies to this. So I'm just saying that those four CO double bonds is for x i'm just going to solve for x now and finally this um, explanation of why the enthalpy change of combustion for methoxymethane is more negative than for ethanol but we've got to do it in terms of bonds broken and bonds formed we can't just do another calculation so I've got the original equation at the bottom there. There's the new one. So you can see there's a lot of common features to it. So three moles of oxygen are involved. So obviously those bonds have got to be broken. And bonds formed 
identical, so two moles of CO2, three moles of H2O, exactly the same here. So it's all about the bonds that need to be broken in the organic substance. And I've itemized them there. So in methoxymethane, we've got to break six moles of CH bonds and two moles of CO single bonds. Whereas in ethanol, you've got more bonds to break. So here's the first part of my answer. Less energy is needed to break the bonds in methoxymethane than in ethanol. And then the second part is just to get across that the bonds that are formed are exactly the same. So exactly the same bonds formed, so the energy released will be the same.